Hello, cool listener, who's probably very good looking. Welcome to another episode of the Geek Press Podcast. I'm Noah Garcia, and today co-host Lewis and I go into a deep dive into The Mandalorian as it's halfway through its season, and we talk about what we think of the story and all the moving pieces. We talk about the leaks for the possible release date for the Spider-Man 2 PS5 game, and just catch up in general and shoot the shit. If you enjoy what you're listening to, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe across all social media platforms. Help us rise to the ranks, hit the number one spot, so we can brag about it for a week and then get cancelled and leave the internet forever. Which honestly is every internet celebrity's dream. See you in a bit. Hello ladies and gentlemen, theys and nums, boys and girls. Welcome to episode 45 of the Geek Press Podcast. I am joined by my rotating guest, a celebrity co-host. Today, you guys know this person. You guys Don't love know. this person. The one, the okay. only, Mr. Pedro Pascal. How are you doing, Mr. Pascal? I I could never do a Pedro Pascal impression. How dare you? Uh, all of a how sudden, all of a sudden, how, how dare, dare you? you? But if I asked how you this three months you? ago, you'd be like, who's, who's Pedro? <laughs> how dare you ask, that, ask me of that of my husband? How could you? You know, I do, appre- I, I do appreciate that everyone loves him now, but I'm like, where were you guys during the Narcos phase or Kingsman? There was plenty of Pascal content. I, I first saw him in Game of Thrones, and I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I saw him in Narcos first. But then I went back and I was like, oh, he got his big break in Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. I didn't know he was in, you know, uh, I think I've heard of it, but I didn't know he was like, is he a major player in the show? Bro, or, yeah, like, he's like, what are the two major oh, characters? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can talk about Pedro Pesca all day. So hello, everyone. I'm no, you can't. Each week I am subjected to doing a celebrity impersonation, but today I wasn't having it because I, <sighs> I, I wouldn't want to disrespect Pedro Pascal like that, but hello guys, welcome to the podcast. Lewis, what have you been listening to? What have you been watching? What have you been up to? What's going on? Uh, okay, so I've officially joined the IGN news team. That's okay. like that's like the biggest thing that's happened for me. Hooray! Yeah. Woo. Um, and honestly, like they're uh, they're they're pretty like. I don't want to say like intense, but like it's a, it's a different vibe from GameSpot for sure. Hmm. Um, yeah, like as soon as as soon as I joined the news team here, I'll give you like a quick behind behind the scenes. Um, <clears throat> the their editor, I I believe it's the editor in chief. Uh, uh-huh. Let me look her up really quick as I am talking. But, but you feel like it's more of like not it's more of like a faster pace type of. Uh, environment oh a hundred percent yeah okay so the the uh her name is cat bailey she is the ign news director we shout had, out cat bailey yeah shout out cat <clears throat> we we had been exchanging dm not dms uh emails for about two and a half months close to three months give or take you know and she finally she like we we finally get all the onboarding process because that takes a while uh, no matter no matter where you're yeah. at it's always gonna take a while and so it um we finally get all that done i i joined their slack and then she's like hey can you hop on a, a facetime call real quick and uh mm-hmm. i'm like oh shit that like you know that's that's that that's never happened to me before where i've joined their slack and they're like hey hop on hop on a call with us um because with with uh, the guides team never done that with the news team and guides team at the game spot never done that either and she's talking to me and like when i tell you i was fucking nervous <laughs> i was fucking nervous talking to her like for those like okay you guys listen to the podcast I, i'm pretty sure you have a good idea of like how i project myself or how, how i present myself mm-hmm. when i was when i was talking to her i was i was thinking to myself in my head i was like okay louise don't don't stutter your words right pronunciate them all correctly you know you got this you got this i'm like and i was just like uh yeah 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 you know i was fucking intimidated it it was just it was just so weird because i haven't felt like that in a very very long time and then oh. as soon as soon as we were done i'm not saying she's like in a like a mean lady or anything it was just it was just like i i, I can't describe that feeling you know it's it, mm-hmm. it's it, it's it's akin to when like 
you you get that dream job and mm-hmm. you're just you're feeling all you're feeling a wave of emotions that's that's exactly how i felt you know and yeah. then as soon as we had finished talking she was just trying to get to know me a little bit she was saying oh what's this what's that blah 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 and we you know we were exchanging back and forth and afterwards she had told me are you good to write some stories right now and i'm like yeah uh, i'm i'm free and she's like okay here's here's some stories and immediately assigned to be like three stories and so, that's great yeah it was great but i just like hit the ground running you know and i was like holy shit and it was just it was just so fucking cool because i i was look well elizabeth was looking at my my credentials i guess or like my bylines and it was almost a year ago from that day where my first story from ign got published oh so yeah it was it was pretty dope but that was like the biggest thing that happened and i, I do, that's really awesome i love I, that for you i i do i do feel a little bad because i had told her uh, i i i tell her what i tell all my editors that i i do this full time this is how i make my money and yeah. she was like okay cool so every now and then she'll message me she'll be like hey are you free to do a story are you free to do this you know if like no one has no one has grabbed this story majority of the time i i would say yes I would yeah. be, I would tell her like yeah, but it's just I also I'm a part of like four different fucking teams I guess you could say, and yeah. so on the flip side of the news I've been with the IGN guides team essentially since I've broke into the industry, and they've just been flooding me with work, and so she hit me up she was like hey are you free to do this I was like no I'm working on a guide for this game right now she's like oh no don't trip it's all good and then she hits me up again, um. She hit me up again earlier this week. She was like, "Hey, are you free to do this?" I'm like, "Hey, I'm sorry, but I'm working on a guide for this, and I don't, I don't want her to think of like this motherfucker just said he's free all the time, mm-hmm. and now all of a sudden he's not free." <laughs> <laughs> and then she's gonna be like, oh, "I can't contact him anymore. I thought he was free, but he's not." And then just stops hitting you up. That's yeah, or the the yeah, exactly, exactly. And then I get in my own head, and I'm like, "No, Louis, shut the fuck up. This and that, blah blah." Um, yeah, like you told her you're busy, but you know. Uh, maybe, maybe if you ever get that fear, maybe when you're done with a guide, you could be like, "Ooh, just finished a crazy guide. How's your day going?" Just like be casual <laughs> about it. I would try to. I, I, I mm-hmm. haven't, I haven't got there just yet. You know, to where I could like kind of joke around with them. Like with the, uh, with yeah. the GameSpot team, I could shoot the shit with them all day if I really wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, I'm not there just yet with IGN. I'm still like the new kid on the block. You know. Do, do you see yourself cutting? back on some of other projects that you're usually doing to kind of focus more on like the news article writing shtick or are you going to try to balance this a bit more i had i had been asking myself that question since i joined their news Mm -hmm. team and i think the answer is i'm just going to bounce between that's the i'm yeah i like as as like as tedious as guides can be at times Mm -hmm. they they pay good so I'm just going to bounce wherever the money's at, you know? I'm not going to stay loyal to just one. Ideally, I would like to be picked up as an editor, like a news editor. Mm-hmm. But if, like, if a guides editor opens up somewhere, I, I, I feel like I am more than qualified for that position. Yeah. So that's, well, that's good. That's, I love that for you. That's my plan. And then, um, yeah, that was, that was, like, the big part. And it the way they, like, edit the stories is a bit, a bit different, too, from GameSpot. Mm-hmm. So it was... There was a few things I adjusted to, like um, I've I've had some I had some feedback for some stories where they were like they they go in and they would like edit it themselves and then they would tell me like hey here's what you did wrong fix it next you know I'm paraphrasing of course mm-hmm. they're like fix it and it was like A B C D E F G and you look at that and you're like oh my god that's a lot of edits but then once mm-hmm. you really break it down you're like oh no that's it's just like oh baby put a comma here you didn't. Mm-hmm. You didn't uh like for their like where where they go and publish it's called a CMS. It's like oh you just didn't click this on the CMS. I'm like oh it's just a little a bunch of little shit you know like, <clears throat> but yeah that that was like the biggest thing, and it's uh it's it's pretty cool though because you know I'm working I'm working with IGN it's it's fucking like that's fucking dope, <laughs> and it's really great. Yeah, and another another part of me that's like really happy is that. For GameSpot, I purposely stood. I I purposely stayed away from entertainment news. Mm-hmm. 
So by entertainment news, uh, for those like not in like the gaming, no, that's like movies, TV, stuff like that. Video games and tech are like kind of more or less in their own category. And like all of that, everything else, like like I just mentioned, is entertainment. And for GameSpot, I purposely stood away from that because they have their own like entertainment team. I work alongside them, but more or less, you know, whenever an entertainment story goes up, they're the ones who grab it. And I was like, whatever, you guys got your thing. I got my thing. We're chilling. And <clears throat> my like second story I wrote with IGN was an entertainment story. And I and mo majority of my stories so far with them have been in the entertainment base. So it is it is nice to kind of uh, use that part of my brain again where i'm talking about like hollywood actors i'm talking about directors and um i haven't it's been a while since i've really kind of read like variety or like the hollywood reporter or indie wire wow. stuff like that so i'm going back and like i'm reading those articles and and it, it's a different format from how you do video games so and oh I, yeah 100 percent. and and ign is one of those weird websites where they're kind of like a tell-all site where you 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 talk about games you talk about anime you talk about movies and it's not weird because it's like you're not known for that one thing so having having to be versatile on the fly with different writing formats is really it's really fun Sorry, I was talking a lot. No, it's okay. I just I I, I had to silence my Discord because I I had a burp and I didn't want the audience to hear that. <laughs> uh, but no, that's incredible. I'm really excited that you get to be a bit. You get to do a different writing style because I know a lot of your stories in the past of as as of recent have been guide work or a lot of news stories. So I'd like to switch those gears in your brain and be a bit more looser with your writing styles be a bit more creative instead of being too factual you can kind of you have more liberties to to work with when you're doing entertainment stories mm -hmm. exactly. so i'm happy you get to switch the gears a little bit and you're just like oh, okay this is i remember what this was like so i'm happy for you that's really exciting uh this is something i know you've wanted for a long time yeah and i'm glad that you're you you jumped into this phase of life because i remember you texted me i was like ah <laughs> But yeah, that yeah, uh, that that's the that was the that was one of the things that happened. And just to kind of give you an idea too, like how different like IGN operates. Um, mm -hmm. I remember there was this story I wrote on. I don't fuck. I'm blanking on his name, but he was the guy who who was the Joker in the new Batman movie. He popped up at the end, and he's also in the Eternals. Oh yeah, uh -huh. I don't know his name, but I'll look it up. Yeah, so he had been cast. He's being rumored to be casted as the main villain. Or not the main villain, but like one of the main characters in the upcoming sequel to Gladiator that came out like back in the day. And my editor hit me up. She's like, "Hey, can you can you tackle the Gladiator story?" And I was like, "Yeah, for sure." And she she had sent me like fucking ten links, and she was like, "Okay, here's the main story, and here's all the other stories you're gonna need a reference in your story." And I was like. Ah! I was just like freaking the fuck out for a second. I'm never gonna forget that. Oh, it's Barry Keegan. Barry Keegan. Yeah, there we go. He was in many things, apparently. Most of them I have not seen, but you know, good for him. Yeah, he was in a he's in a Hulu show. He was in an indie movie. He was in Dunkirk. Dunkirk. I never saw Dunkirk. That's the American one with Harry Style, right? Yes. He was in Chernobyl. I need to watch Chernobyl. I need the to watch Green that. Knight. I'm just going down a list. The Green Knights is that the one with the Nazis, where it's like Hannibal no, Nazi or something? No, the Green Knight. That's a Green is, Room. I'm thinking. I, 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 yeah, the Green Knight is. Uh, it's like a a King Arthur. Oh Arthurian tale. yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard it flopped. Yeah, I didn't watch that. I remember a lot of film snobs were like, "Go watch the Green," because it came out like <clears throat> around the time like a popular blockbuster movie came out, and of course it got mm -hmm. overshadowed by that. I just remember. I like you said, film film people being like, go watch it. But I do remember racists being mad because apparently like King Arthur was black or something. I guess I'm, just like, I'm just like, babe, King Arthur wasn't real. <laughs> <laughs> He's not. A, he wasn't. A, as far as we can tell, he was not alive. He was not a thing. Like these King Arthur stories are pulled out of the stories they had in the Dark Ages before they recorded some shit in england like they did not have they have artifacts that they think might be but they have no 
real evidence that fucking King Arthur existed. So it's all fake news. That's why I don't get mad when King Arthur is a woman in anime <laughs> to save her from Fate Night. In fact, she's one of the best part of that anime. But yeah, it's it's not real. So, so in conclusion, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got distracted. I was like, how did we get here? And then I just had to stop myself, switch back into third gear and get back on track. So I'm very happy for you. I'm so excited. I know Thank you've been you. very busy with work, so I, yeah, I, it's, it's a, it's a blessing and a curse. You know? I've been extremely busy as of late mm-hmm. because, like, usually, you know, I would I would give you guys a little bit more of a mm-hmm. peek behind the window of my personal life. Um, my my work day would roughly end like at like three thirty, close to four o'clock. Now I've been working straight from like legit nine to five at home, and the other day. Uh, Elizabeth took me out somewhere and I was like, man, I'm fucking tired. And she was like, why? And I'm like, because I've been straight up working all fucking day. And I was I was thinking to myself again, I was like, yeah, this is this is the this is the work life that I used to do. <laughs> but instead of out and about, you're just on your computer t- yeah. tapping away. Sorry. So you don't remember to start taking more stretching and start like yeah, no, I've moving been... your body every hour. You're gonna start getting like carpal tunnel or I've something. I've been I've been like feeling like shaky in my not shaky, but like the urge mm-hmm. to move in my legs. So I, yeah. I haven't been going to the gym. I've been lacking it again. So I need to start going back to the gym again. Mm-hmm. Uh because I went like a good chunk last week, a good and then I didn't go at all this week. Mm-hmm. But what about you, Noah? What's new with your life? Oh my gosh. Well, I'm so close to graduating. I graduated in May. I'm very excited. May what? Uh, I want to say sixteenth, maybe. I don't. I don't really know. Do you know when your finals are? Uh, my class doesn't really have finals. Oh yeah, I forget uh, you're a comms it, major. We just talked yeah, about it, like our feelings. So like, so <laughs> so, what do you think is wrong? And then I just go, the white man ruined it all. And then my professor starts clapping. Bravo, bravo! bravo. We've taught and you everything you, we could have taught you. <laughs> that's what republicans think college is <laughs> like the white man ruined it all so yeah i'm very excited uh for my finals i just have uh i just turn in a portfolio and finish the research paper okay uh both are both are things that you just slowly work on through the class because they're both mostly lecture although one of them i've been kind of annoyed with because i I had a situation with a counselor where they're like, oops, we forgot to tell you, you have to do these GEs. So I needed an English GE and I, I saw a Latino Latina uh, rhetoric and writings class. And I was like, oh, that fulfills my requirement and it's something I'm interested in. So I take the class and it's fun, but sometimes there are days where I just feel like I'm wasting my time because we'll get there and the professor will be like, oh, here's this article on, like, Dolores Huerta, you know, the woman who helped Cesar Chavez build up, like, the, the farming union. Yeah. Here's an article on Dolores Huerta. Read it, and that'll be the entire class. And I'm thinking <laughs> to myself, I could do this at home. Why, why did I take the 30, 40-minute drive and just do all this just to read an article I could write at home? So I'm a little annoyed but you know, uh, it, it it varies because some weeks will be like that, and other weeks it'll be like we need to examine this paper. Give me the top five reasons why uh, this was written this way. What rhetoric is being used here? What period in civil rights? You know, so there are light weeks and heavy weeks. So that's basically what's been going on. I have my spring break upcoming this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not really doing anything, and I I, I know Lewis and I were talking about this off camera. Uh, off, off recording, and he's just like, oh, your your friends aren't doing anything, and that didn't really hit me until right now. And I was like, oh yeah, we're <laughs> we're all we're all in different stages of our life. Because I remember uh, a friend of mine, Victor, was like, oh, maybe I'll see you during the break, and I was like, oh, I need to put effort if I want to hang out with someone during the break. Because everyone else is at their <laughs> jobs, and shit. like, oh right, I need to put effort. I need to do things. So I guess I'll I'll try I'll probably try to wrangle something together, maybe. But uh, yeah, that's it. As for what I've been watching and uh, reading, I'm still on those Star Wars novels, the Thrawn trilogy. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I think it's interesting because they're introduced. They're, they're having this weird thing where apparently the as it and this is not canon, but Jedi can't use the Force to read or understand clones. They're like this weird blank space. 
and they're using a lot of clones right now in in the book so i think that's an interesting concept especially one that maybe could have introduced in the main series because i think that would have caught the whole clones killing all the jedi thing a bit i think that would have been an interesting aspect if like they had soldiers they couldn't read or influence you know what i mean Uh uh-huh because there's this thing where like luke can like you know like he's force reading people and he can like force manipulate he's like I'm reading these soldiers. I can tell what they're doing. But then when he's going over the clones, he's like, I get nothing back. I can't feel anything from these people. Mm-hmm. I think that's an interesting concept. Uh, I don't know if they'll bring it back, but yeah. Uh, and aside from that, uh, nothing much has been going on. Nothing too crazy. I'm not, I'm not as busy as Mr. Professional Writer over here. Yeah, don't you forget it, too. <laughs> I'll never forget <laughs> it. But you, you know who I'll never forget? Who? Din Djarin and the Mandalorian. You know, I saw this TikTok, right? Mm-hmm. Tell me and, all about it. And, uh, okay, I have a, I have a few things. I I um, I've never noticed how they sexualized Bo Katan in Star Wars. Do they? Yeah, extreme dude. Her armor is like super busty and all that. Like compared to everyone mm-hmm. else, like it's all oh, like the boob armor. The boob armor, the curves on her, it's like super sexualized. I never realized that till the other day, and um. I saw this I saw this TikTok where it was this guy saying, Oh, I don't get how these women are thirsting over the Mando. He's just wearing a mask, this and that. And then it cuts to Bo Katad and she's like all curvy and everything. And then I was like, Oh, okay. And then it got me thinking a little bit. I was I was I was like, why why is she like she's the only man girl well woman Mandalorian who has armor like that? Why is that? That's a little weird. I find it weird. I find it a little weird. You know, she's an attractive lady. I'll, yes, that's very true. Mm-hmm. But it's very, it's, it's, um, there's a conversation to be had in that because a lot of, a lot of video games, Twitter talks about this, uh, mm-hmm. time and time again. And a lot of pro- mostly women. So I don't want to speak on their behalf, but I'm going to kind of like paraphrase a little bit. Essentially, it's like when you're playing a fantasy game and you're, you're, you're a male warrior. The male warrior mm-hmm. chest piece is like the super badass knight armor, you know, mm-hmm. but that same exact armor for the woman, it's, it's a crop top that shows their boobs and a, yeah. lot, a lot of women will it's like say, a little triangle. Exactly. Like little exactly. Triangle. And a lot of women will say, what the fuck? Why? Like that's, this is just feeding into a trope and it does more harm than good. And I've, mm-hmm. I've kind of been thinking about that a little bit with Bo-Katan and it's just a little weird that you you don't really see the the armor all busty like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Granted, she like she doesn't act like it's not like uh in animes or anything like that where they like hypersexualize her, where it's um like her boob has her own gravity, like that exactly, kind of or that's a big part of her personality. Mm-hmm. So it's nothing like that, but it's just it's just a little weird, you know. Yeah, I understand that. I would say that uh, Katie Sackhoff, the actress who plays her, uh, does have hips that don't lie. That yeah. is true. But, yeah, she's a pretty uh, girl. I understand, I understand what you mean by, like, is the intention supposed to be, like, highlighting these features on her? I think it's interesting because if you look at, I wonder if it's the medium, because if you look at something like Star Wars Rebels, uh-huh. where you see a lot more Mandalorians, there, you see a lot more females in armor. And I feel like when I look at those, I don't think they're sexualized. But if you look at something like live action and you kind of have to look like, OK, are these shots showing her as powerful or are they showing her as like a sexual object? Because there is like and some I, straight like booty shots I, I've i seen where it's the episode where where Grogu goes to find her because Din got captured mm-hmm. by like the spider bot. So mm-hmm. there's like a shot where it's Grogu and her walking towards the cave. So it's their back. And you just mm-hmm. like it's just like it's it's a booty shot. I don't know how else to say it, you know. Yeah, it's just a booty shot. I think I'll, I'll have to rewatch that because I don't remember that at all. Just because I respect women so much, I don't Shut sexualize. Shut the fuck them. up! I, I don't sexualize them like you do, but I'll, I'll have I, to check I that just, out. Yeah. I just can't help it. I I, I go feral, you know. <laughs> Elizabeth has to turn off the TV because I start foaming. <laughs> you like a dog with rabies <laughs> and then pixel starts barking and it's a whole thing man <laughs> elizabeth has taken out the stun gun and just uh, you. and i'm out for now like fuck a good 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> but no i think that's a very good conversation because it really the you have to look at shots 
when you're doing television and film uh, and you have to look at shots and you have to say, how is this shot serving the scene? Is mm-hmm. it something just to move the story along? Yeah. Is there something creative? Like, what's the purpose? Oh, yeah. it? Also, too, like, I, w- I want to I want to make it very clear that mm-hmm. I don't I, I'm not, I don't want my words to get misconstrued. I, I'm not shaming her for having a body. That's not yeah. what I'm doing. I am just mm-hmm. saying it is a little weird that her character is the only character that has like, you know, breastplates. And her armor is like the tightest, and you see her mm-hmm. curves. I'm just, that's that's what I'm, I just want to make that very clear. Yeah, like I'll, I'll give an example. Like in the Joss Whedon cut of uh, Justice League, there's when when Wonder Woman talks to Cyborg for the first time, the shot is like straight of her ass, and then it goes into a wide shot, and then you see the both of them. Uh, when they're walking away from the plane, it's of her ass and walking away from both of them. If you look at Zack Snyder's cut it's a different angle altogether that doesn't like put her butt in your face. So like the Joss Whedon, there's clearly the intent to show her ass. I mean, there's literally a scene where the flash is running and he falls into her boobs. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like people make choices with their camera directions and angles. And we have to kind of look at that and say like, well, is this, how does this serve the story? Is, is this meant to sexualize someone? And you know what, now that you've said it, I think I'll start paying better attention to the show and see if they are sexualizing her. Yeah. Because that's something that I didn't really think of. Yeah, because the only reason why it was that was even put on my radar was because of that TikTok I saw where this guy was saying, oh, I get it how this woman, like, how women are thirsting over Mando with the mask because I'm thirsting over uh, Bo-Katan with the helmet on. And it, it, that, that just got me thinking a little bit more. There, so, there was, I don't know if you <laughs> missed it, but there was a conversation on, on social media when Katie Sakoff and the other Mandos first showed up in season two there was a conversation about like boob armor. Like, why does it look like this? Let's talk about it. And I didn't really participate because I don't know much about armoring and stuff, but I, I think it's an interesting conversation to have. Yeah. And I, I think too, just kind of you, you've watched like every fucking star Wars media you could ever watch. Mm-hmm. Um, you said too, that's, that's normal in like the cartoon. They yeah, all, but they I, all look I, like that. But I feel like because, of the cartoon style, nothing's like overly pronounced. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you look at it, it's not like jiggling in your face. Nothing, nothing is really like it doesn't feel sexualized to me in the cartoons. I'm gonna have like, to watch the cartoons. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to watch the cartoons then to see. Because I the bat the only one I watch is the Bad Batch. I, oh, I like it. have you been keeping up with the Bad Batch? I'm like a handful of episodes behind. The last one I just yeah. saw was the Wookiee Jedi. That was cool. <laughs> Her, uh Gungi. Oh, I'm a Gungi stan. He's yeah. gonna die probably, but <laughs> Yeah, seeing seeing him, that was that was super cool. Yeah, I'm enjoying the show. But uh so far of the season of the episodes, what what have you thought of the season so far? Because I noticed Bad Batch that, or Mando? Uh Mando. Oh, okay. I noticed a lot of people are saying it's a little mid, and I understand that. Uh I like it. I just I like it a lot. I like it a lot too. My biggest critique was mm-hmm. they didn't need a whole fucking episode to to show that the new republic has the mundane office life where you just oh i like, like that i thought i i was i was i looked at elizabeth and i was like man this is uh-huh. fucking boring because i just I've... oh go for it no uh go ahead okay because i just didn't they could have chopped that up so mm-hmm. they, they didn't have to show that much of him working at his office job being indoctrinated and all this and it was just so fucking boring and i get it I, what they were doing and and i i had to like look up an article and i'm like why did she why did she betray him and i was like oh okay that makes sense mm-hmm. and also to my biggest thing my biggest fucking thing is i i've had this conversation with elizabeth and now this is where star wars gets divided and this is where i'm going to show <laughs> my true colors okay uh, I taking a stand, a personal stand yeah, on something. Let's go. Me personally, I think the Last Jedi fucked up the new the new trilogy. It okay. It, they they Ryan Johnson said, "Hey, I'm gonna go and take this in a whole another direction. Fuck what J.J. Abrams established." And they did. They had to do some crowd control and to like kind of bring it back. Mm-hmm. Granted, it's not all his fault because they all should have had a cohesive plan to begin with. Yeah, but. I don't like how they just straight up ruined Luke's character because I personally feel like Luke was always supposed to be that pillar of hope. Luke was always proven to be better than everyone. 
because that was just who he was in a world full of darkness. He was the light, you know, mm-hmm. and that's why I really like Luke. And I often sometimes it's going to sound cheesy, but I ask myself, what would Luke do in this situation? Mm-hmm. But I've also I've also found myself saying now, but Luke falls to temptation like everybody else. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, man, that just ruined his to me. That just ruins his character permanently mm-hmm. now because I know how his outcome's going to be. Mm-hmm. Granted, he does kind of redeem himself a little bit, but still, it doesn't make up for the fact that he did this. Mm-hmm. And um, I'll tell you how this comes into play with what I'm going to say. Okay, I was like, how does this connect to the Mandalorian? Uh, I'll, I'm t- like, uh, wait. I'll tell you how this comes into I'm play. I'm being now. patient. I'm being patient. I'm holding myself back. Now, I mm-hmm. feel like when I saw the New Republic using a mind wiper, a mind flare, I think is what they called it. Why would Princess Leia sign off on that? Because she, her whole thing was, we need to be better than the Empire. Mm-hmm. We need to, we need to show people that they're, they can change, that there is good in people. So why is she resorting to tactics that border, that Vader borderline used on her when he gave her like the true serum, remember? Like, why is mm-hmm. she resorting to these, like, I, I don't know how else to put it, but like Nazi-like tactics, why? Why oh would? Oh my god! Why would she? Have, why would she sign okay. off on that? Granted, okay. I know she has a whole galaxy uh-huh. to rule, but still, Princess okay. Leia. Would, okay, I have an up. answer. I actually have an answer for this. Okay, I okay. really I have a really good answer. Okay, so uh, first of all, I liked the depict. The question. The thing is, I liked the episode, but I was more so like, is this really necessary right now in this series? Like that was my biggest grief with it because uh-huh. I liked everything that was there, but I'm just like. I'm here for Mando. I understand what you're doing, but I, I'd rather return to that. Yeah, it's called the Mandalorian, but, not the fucking yeah. New Republic. Yeah, like how were there Boba Fett and then it turned into Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> like, guys, please stay on target. Please stay on target. Because it wasn't uh, even like, they, mm-hmm. they didn't even like, you know, lube us up. They just went straight for it. Just right into that like, character. So I think uh, there's an actual thing about this is that uh, I think it's very interesting how they're setting up the New Republic just to show how easily and corrupted that system was. Because once you win a revolution, you need to think about what comes after. You need to think about how your society will form after that. And I think that was a major flaw with the rebellion because they spent so much time fighting and taking down. They didn't think of what comes after. And there's actually a book that's really good. It's by uh, Bloodline by Claudia Gray. And basically, it the book is about Leia I won't give you major spoilers because I've only read parts of it, but it Leia sees the bullshit that is the New Republic and kind of like fractures from it and she starts a resistance. Mm -hmm. So Leia sees this bullshit. She's like, this government is fucking failing. Y'all are fucking up. I don't know if I can be a part of this anymore. So Leia literally sees through this bureaucratic bullshit. Mm, Okay. okay. So, but then again, you raise an interesting question because this is giving you all this stuff. And you're like, why would Leia stand for this? And the only way you would be able to justify it is if you had read a book. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So I, I, even though there's like an explanation, it's like, I don't know about the book. But then again, I feel like lots of people should be more aware of the Star Wars books because they're really good. But you shouldn't have to do homework in other areas to make something else better. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It should enrich your watching, not justify your watching. But I would say to everyone, if that wasn't what Lewis, Lewis is like, Honest, like, uh, like, what, what's the word? What am I thinking? Tangent. Justified. <laughs> I was about to say justified response to that episode. If you have a similar thing, one hundred percent Claudia Gray Bloodline. It's under ten dollars on Amazon. Ah. Go to a bookstore. It's a really good book. I would say everyone should pick it up. It's very interesting. Uh, it really helps Leia. I think not helps, but it really has a good story with Leia in it. So there, there's a justification, and you know, it reminded me of World War II post. Americas with uh, Operation Paperclip, where the U.S. just uh, took in a bunch of Nazi scientists to work on shit. So it just reminded me of that, and I think that's that's a very interesting parallel because Star Wars has been doing a lot of real world parallels as of late. That are you know Star Wars has always been paralleling the real world, but it's been more like explicit in the narratives they've been pulling off, especially in like Andor, from what I've heard. I, I'm not going to say for sure because I haven't watched Andor yet because I'm awful, but I've heard a lot of stuff like that. So I think that's that's a valid concern, but I would say there's answers for that concern. 
Leia was like, fuck this new Republic, y'all are whack. So yeah, that's my tangent. <laughs> you went on your tangent, that's my tangent. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm enjoying Mando. I I think a big thing that it's not mm-hmm. a, it's not even that much of a big thing in my opinion, but it mm-hmm. uh, it has kind of handicapped them, is how mm-hmm. they are trying to connect this to the bigger picture of Star Wars at large. Have you seen a lot of those theories where like, oh, they're they're talking about cloning, yeah, in this, and then in Bad Batch they're doing this, and it's all going to lead to Snoke and da 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 da. Uh-huh. I think that 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 I think I'm like. I guess <laughs> I, I, I feel like that's valid, though, because mm-hmm. they they straight up. Why else would they need Grogu? And the cloning technology has been such a big background mm-hmm. like plot of the series mm-hmm. because that's that's what um, Gideon was trying to do. And then they make they make it a point again to bring up the cloning process, you know, and then in the Bad Batch, when spoilers for season got, one. Oh, OK, OK. Yeah. No, spoilers for season one. When they destroy Camino, so they don't have to worry about any of their like cloning people out there. Mm-hmm. They straight up murked Camino, so they don't have to worry about their sh- cloning bullshit. So like they're there, they it's, it feels like they're kind of leading up to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Whether or not the execution will be done well, who knows? Uh-huh. Because I, I believe it's canon that uh, when Kylo Kylo's contacted, I think <sighs> Snow contacts him from like. The outer regions of space. So we we don't know much about Sm- Snoke. So I think it'll be interesting to see how they develop him. Uh, I hate Rise of Skywalker a lot. So <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's we'll see how it goes. It's funny because I actually liked that one better than the Last Jedi. I think I understand that. I just don't like that they made Ray Skywalker a Palpatine. Oh. Because I I enjoyed because a lot of Star Wars has been about the chosen one narrative, and the thing about the Last Jedi was that the chosen one doesn't really matter because you as an individual can make just amount of a difference as whoever thinks they are the chosen one. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't matter where you come from; you can be the hero of your life. That's why Rey as a nobody works really well for me. Because she doesn't need to be some special lineage. She's a person that wants to stand up for what is right. And the common folk can be the heroes of tomorrow. You don't have to be some special-ass person. And then in the next movie, when they're like, actually, you're a Palpatine, and that's why you're so powerful. And I'm just like, (laughs) oh, my God, I fucking hate that. That's fucking stupid. Like, there are some nice moments in Rise of Skywalker that I do like, like when when Rey goes full, like, Avatar stayed and all the Jedi, like, jump in her, and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, okay, I like that. Like, there's stuff in there that I like, but it's just I don't like a lot of the concepts. So I, I'm, we're getting off track of Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, I wish, I, I feel this season's a little, it feels a little lost for me, because I'm not sure what the end goal is, because end goal of season one is fight off the guys trying to take Grogu. End goal of season two is find a teacher for Grogu. End goal season three is, I guess, Mando. He he has no aspirations to lead. His aspiration was to rejoin his cult. And he did that in like episode three or something. You know, I did think it was so, cool seeing that Mandalorian monster. That, that was cool. That was really cool. So I'm cool. wondering if like the end goal is maybe Bo-Katan? It seems rallying. like... It seems like she's kind of like leaning more into her, the cult. Like she's yeah, she's because she hasn't accepting. taken her helmet off. Yeah, she's been like doing the creed. She's been doing all that shit. <laughs> I think it's funny because at the end of the last episode, they're just like Bo Katon Kreese. Yo, welcome to stay with us. And she's like looking around, and all the hands are on her. And I'm just like, bitch, did I just join a cult? <laughs> like, <did> I... <laughs> I thought that was funny because she was like looking around as everyone was putting their hands on her, and like, oh, this is what. I did. And she's like looking around. And I'm just like. <laughs> When you when you accidentally join a cult with your friends, like, <laughs> I thought that was funny. But uh, yeah, I'm a, I I feel like this season feels a little directionless, but I'm enjoying it because I just like I like adventures. I I feel like that's a big part of Mandalorian is just more about the journey, less about the destination. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm enjoying it. But I, what, what I will think? I will say I I wholeheartedly mm-hmm. agree with you. Mm-hmm. But to play devil's advocate. <laughs> Uh, as you love to do yes i will say this 
Disney Plus mm-hmm. doesn't have a lot going on for itself. Mm-hmm. They, you know, you you can only go back and watch The Simpsons so many times. You can only go back and watch Clone Wars. So you know, you get you get what I'm trying yeah. to say. They I feel like they're lacking on new content. They 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 lack bad on content. So with the mm-hmm. hit show like The Mandalorian, you can't afford to fuck around like that. Yeah. If if this was like a Netflix. You know, where, you know, if they have Stranger Things and let's say, oh, I didn't like the new season of Stranger Things, whatever. I'm going to go watch you or I'm going to go watch uh, fucking Make It a Murder or whatever. You know, you got a you got a plethora of content you could watch. But this yeah. is not the case. So I, I feel this like is one of your headlining shows. Yes. One of your headlining shows that's going to get people to give you their money. So mm-hmm. you need to get your shit together a little bit better. <laughs> And I was I was noticing the because di- I rewatched the episode this morning, uh-huh. and I, I thought the, the dialogue was a bit weird because they kept repeating shit. Like what? Give me an example. Okay, for example, in the beginning of the episode, the uh, the beast is just like, "Oh, we." C- I think somebody says we cannot reach the beast with our jetpacks because they'll hear him. And then they cut to Bogotan's ship, and she says, "We can't reach the beast because with our jetpacks because they'll hear him. We'll have to climb on the side." And then later, when they're climbing, they'll say, we can't use our jetpacks. We have to climb. Like, they said it three times. <laughs> and it was like, bitch, I know. I'm aware. I know that you can't use your jetpacks to get up there because you have to climb. <laughs> and it's funny because they do the same thing. We're like, we can't use our, we can't do, we, no blaster fire because we don't want to hurt the child. And then they say again, no blaster child. <laughs> and I'm just like... <laughs> I'm just like I know, and I was just like, "Who wrote this fucking episode?" And I looked at it, and it's John Favreau and Dave Filoni, and I'm just like, "Babes, what's going on? You all tired? Are you, are you guys get? Are you guys good? Is everything okay? Are you getting burnt <laughs> out? Because I love you guys, but if you're getting burnt out, I'd rather you give it to new people than keep your pet project around. Like fucking let let's mix it up." But. uh <laughs> So I was just, I, it, it didn't distract me because I, but it, it, it is something I noticed. So I don't know. I don't know what you could say about that. I don't want to be nitpicky, but I'm just like, I get it. Like, I get it. You yeah, I can't use your jetpacks. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. See, see, it's just like, I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's, I'm, there's only four episodes left. Yeah, and I haven't seen too much of the Dark Saber. I've been super excited to see that. Seen it like three yeah. times. I'm like, come on. Bokatan had hilarious. that one cool scene where she was like, doof, doof. that's about it. I I wonder if they'll end the season with like Bo, like, I want to challenge you for that fucking Dark Saber. I feel like and he'd be like, all right, here, just take it. <laughs> no, but no, because even that he that's the thing. He that's the thing that's so funny about <laughs> Mando. He's such a fucking himbo that doesn't give a shit. Like, he could just live on a farm and be happy. Bogotan's like, we need to get our people fucking together and raise Mandalore out of the depths of the wreckage of our past. And Din is just like, I just want to fucking chill. Like, I just want, me and my son just want to fucking relax. Like, it's so funny because he's so, like, not interested in anything grandiose. So I think that's interesting pairing him with Bogotan. Because I could see later in the season, Bo being like, all right, let's fight. She fights him and wins, and like all the Mandos around her are like true leader of Mandalore. And now that she has like the cult on her side, I could see her going and like reviving the planet or some shit. So I feel like maybe that's something they could work towards. I don't know. I can but we'll see. see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. So I, I'm, 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 I'm enjoying it. I know some people have their qualms with it, but I'm, I'm enjoying the journey. Like, really, what have people been saying, though? I've been out of this I, discourse. I, I saw the most dumbest take yesterday on TikTok. It had like 20K views. It was this guy that was talking about um, the ba- flashback with Grogu leaving the Jedi Temple. Oh, yeah. I want to talk about that. That Dude, that scene was so fucking cool. You know what the guy said? You know what he said? He was like, why is this fucking no-name Jedi still? Why couldn't it have been Mace Windu? At least Windu was out doing something. <laughs> somebody responded. He died. Yeah, he was doing something. He was dying. Uh, <laughs> somebody in the comments, but 
isn't Mace Windu dead during this? And then the guy responded, he's just like, that's not confirmed. And, like, <laughs> and he made another TikTok. I, I watched a couple of them because I was obsessed for a second. He made a couple of TikToks like, why wasn't it Ahsoka? Why wasn't it Obi-Wan? Why the fuck do you give this to a no name? And I'm just like, motherfucker. Ahsoka is fighting for her life, trying not to die. Obi-Wan shows up to the temple after Order 66. Yeah, he was just fighting Grievous. He was fighting for his life. They were all fighting for their lives. <laughs> I'm just Think about fucking the Jedi, Kelleran Beck, uh, played by Ahmed Best, who was uh, Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks. And you know what? Ahmed Best deserves all the love in the world. That man, he was so ridiculed and bullied for playing Jar Jar. Him he and had, Kid like, Annie need their retribution. Uh-huh. They had dark thoughts he he spoke about this in the past with different interviews he has not had a great time so honestly redemption for not even redemption like good for him good yeah for him, i was happy i was happy that uh that feloni because i was talking about it to elizabeth they're like why mm-hmm. <laughs> she was like man i bet this guy felt like so cool during this scene and i'm like mm-hmm. yeah i'm like i'm pretty sure feloni and um john favreau just threw him a bone like here man just let's give you this fucking cool ass moment and you know what? He was cool. He had two lightsabers. He was like, "Yeah, Dude. the dude was badass." And you know, I'm, I'm, like, happy. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I, I did. It does beg the question now, where I'm like, "All right, where, where's he at now?" You know? Yeah. But I'm, and I'm kind of happy if we don't see him. If that's his whole yeah, little thought, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, he could have died there, but uh, I thought it was cool that uh, he, that they were saved by Naboo. Like those were Naboo man. That was a Naboo style ship. Oh, that's right, huh? Because Naboo is my favorite planet in all of Star Wars. I love the ships. I love the architecture. It's my favorite thing. So when I saw the Naboo starship come down, I was like, oh, my God, it's Naboo. Like, I was so happy. <laughs> and I love them. And I don't, I don't know. So good for him. Uh, is, but is there anything else you want to talk about the Mandalorian? Uh, yeah, nothing else. Nothing else I could really think of. You could tell how excited I was. Right. <laughs> So if my mic peaked, I'm sorry. Okay, you <laughs> Although can fix I fix it in post. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I heard there's uh like a broken glass. I've heard there's been some leaks going around, Lewis. What's going on? What's happening? Okay, so the voice actor of Venom in Spider Man Two. Mm-hmm. Tony uh, Todd. So to- no, it's not Tony Todd, is it? Tony Todd? I, I I guess yeah. <laughs> we gotta look it. Up. Um, yeah, look I was up. pulling up. Yeah, you didn't you didn't warn me for this. I was, I'm like fucking scrolling. I'm sorry. I thought it was Tony Todd. I could be wrong. I don't know. Hold on, hold on. Keep talking, Noah. Keep talking. Okay. Okay. So basically, uh, Marvel Spider Man Two is a really big anticipated game for a lot of people. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got don't it. really. You don't know when it's supposed. To... Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, sorry, go, ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, so Tony Todd, the actor who played as Candyman in the OG Candyman movies, which I haven't seen yet, but he does make mm-hmm. a cameo at the end of the most recent Candyman. That's like the big spoiler. Mm-hmm. Um, really good movie, by the way. If you haven't seen the new Candyman, go watch it. But he is going to be voicing Venom in Spider mm-hmm. in the PlayStation Spider Man series. So he posted on Twitter on March 21st this because he was in an exchange with some fans because he posted a picture of him in a mocap suit. Uh-huh. And everyone was like, oh, that looks so cool. You know, Venom, blah, 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 blah. You know, just, just hyping him up. So he had said this to one of his fans when they had they had asked him like, oh, can you give us any uh, something along the lines of like, can you give us a hint of when it's going to come out? You know, something, something like that. I, it's not verbatim. That's what that was said. Yeah. But he says this in this in his tweet. Looks like September massively Ooh. publicly uh, coming in August. Commercials start dropping in August. So I'm told, hold on to your uh, hold on and hold your breath. It's going to be necessary. So he tweeted. Ooh. Yeah, he tweeted that out. And then everyone was like, it, it was it's fucking hilarious because I think that tweet's still up. And if you look through mm-hmm. the comments, everyone's saying Imsodniak looking at this tweet like, don't be surprised if he, if, uh, he goes missing now. PlayStation ain't going <laughs> to let this slide. <laughs> oh, no, it's been deleted. It's been deleted. It's been deleted? Yeah. 
Oh, that's fucking funny. That's very funny. He's he's doing like a Tom Holland drop. It's you know it's just Spider Man. Spider Man actors and people they just they just can't help themselves. Yeah. So he after like you know saying it's coming out in September this and that. A few hours later, he posted a picture with him in the pool, and he was like, "That's it. No more leaks for today." And I was like, <laughs> "Okay." <laughs> But how do you feel knowing now that Spider Man 2 is coming out in September, Noah? I feel like I'm gonna have to hurry my ass up and get myself a PS5. Oh, well, they're like dummy easy to get now. Oh, yeah, now that they're easy to get. I know. Uh, uh, attention to all audience. If you heard headline and reports of like, oh, shortage, shortage, now's the time to get them. Now's yeah. The time to get them. They have, they have a, there's, uh, there's like a steady influx of them in stock now. Yeah, don't, don't, but, don't go, yeah. don't go get it there, scalper. <laughs> So yeah, now now it's out, and I'm very excited because Spider Man PS4 was such a great game. Yeah, I liked it a lot. That's the only game I've ever platinum. Yeah. Oh yeah. Huh. Good for you. And uh, Venom is basically the only confirmed villain so far, and I think their version of Venom is also very interesting from what we think we know from like the end of that game. Because it's not Eddie Brock; it's uh, Harry Osborn, apparently. Yeah. Well, suppose that's what we think it is. Yeah. After. And, you know, they could always do who knows what they'll do. Switch. Yeah, they could always do a bait and switch. But I think that's that's so cool. I'm very excited for Miles and Peter. I really hope they have like a switch character mechanic type things. So, like if I want to do this mission is if I want to play the game as like Miles or Peter, I can switch. And I heard that's honest, what's going to happen. I would love that because mm-hmm. Miles, I know you haven't played it yet, but he's a fun character to play. He looks, I mean, so far from what I've seen in the game, he's fucking adorable. I love him. Oh, yeah. He's, he's a fun uh, power set. Uh, there, was, there was also rumors. Uh, this hasn't been confirmed, but it was going to be like online co-op. And I think that would be fucking cool. Like just having <sighs> two Spider-Man yeah. swing around New York. Oh, that, you know, I didn't think of it like that, but I'm like, oh, that is kind of cool. All right, what's your what's your quarrel with that? Because it just reminded me, aren't there some games that can only be played if you are like connected to Wi-Fi or something like that? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that is a that is a big that those are like uh kind of like the Fortnites of the world, you know, games so, like that or like so Suicide just, Squad. Mommy, yeah, how about how serious? I think we talked about that on the podcast actually. Uh, I think I don't know if we did, but it's like you can't play Suicide Squad without an internet connection or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, the moment you said that, I was like, "Ooh!" But then you said "co-op," and I was like, "Okay, I get it. Never mind." So for a second, I was worried, and then I was like, "Oh, never mind. I'm good." But very excited for that game. Uh, Peter's great. Miles is amazing. Yeah, it's dead don't, dead don't, air. Don't, don't don't worry about who I favor based on my adjectives. Because I am I am a Miles. I'm sorry. I'm kind of a Miles head. You are. I I kind of I have more Miles comics than I do Peter. Does Miles have his own? Does he have his own like Spider Man brand? Like not brand, but run, like how they do yeah, with Captain America. Yeah, he has many. Oh, okay, I didn't uh, know that. I always just thought I he think, was bundled in with like champions. No, the champions. The book isn't running right now, but uh, I think I got into Miles a lot because there was just I think you know about it, but for our audience, there was an there was another universe called the Ultimate Universe. Where they uh set 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 us they started everything from scratch, and uh, in the Ultimate Universe, there Peter Parker died, and Miles picked up the mantle of Spider Man, and I think because I was looking at Peter Parker Ultimate Spider Man, I kind of just transitioned into Miles, so I have a couple of his like origin graphic novels and stuff, so like I'm a big Miles fan, so I'm excited mm-hmm. about that and Spider Verse two and when did Spider Verse two come out? Um, I think I want to say I can look it up right now, but I think this fall in all in November. So late, so late this year. Yes, it's one of the last movies of this year, I believe. Okay, 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 okay. Um, let me look it up really quickly. Uh, I'm talking, so there's no dead air. <laughs> uh, which is oh, actually, it's this summer. It's June second, twenty twenty three. Oh, okay. So just in like in what, like two, three months. Oh yeah, I thought it was. It's it's coming closer than I thought. That's what she said. Oh my god! <laughs> a family friendly podcast. Yes. yes, we talk about boobs and penises, but this is a family friendly podcast. 
But so, uh, is there anything mm-hmm. else you want to talk about in it? Because I think that's really it for the most part. I'm I'm excited for it. I need to get through Miles. I'm gonna, from what you've told me, Miles Morales is significantly shorter than Peter Parker. Oh yeah, it, it feels more so of just they're testing out. They wanted to play with like the PS5 graphics. It feels like you know what I mean. Just a demo, virtually. Yeah, yeah. It feels like a little demo, but uh, I think I'm good on. I think everyone's ready for us to shut up now, but uh, Lewis, do you have any homework for our listeners? Yeah, your homework is to mm-hmm. go and fuck you, you, you come up with something. But what you come up with something first? Give me time to think. Okay, okay, um, uh, um, okay. If you've ever, if you like Marvel stuff and you see there's like a little shark. That hangs out with all the Marvel characters. His name's Jeff. Oh yeah, Jeff. Uh, uh, he has a comic coming out this Wednesday. It's a one shot where he's just hanging out with everyone. So uh, go get it. Go 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 get. It. It's called It's Jeff. That's the comic name. Really? I might get that. That's actually yeah. It's cute. a little yeah. It's like a bunch of his stories and stuff, and then like a one shot, and it, it's very cute. It's very cute. Um, uh, um, uh, d- d- tweet something mean to Zachary Levi. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't. I don't. I don't confirm. I don't. I don't. No, bullying is bad. Uh, you could tweet to me something bad about Zachary. Really, really quick, I think it was funny how uh, we didn't talk about this, but how the Rock we did it. The Rock handicapped uh, Shazam. Yeah. There's a whole thing where there are certain characters and ideas they couldn't apparently use because Dwayne just refused. I want all the- so. Apparently, uh, there was a whole thing where they wanted a post credit scene where Shazam was rooted into the Justice Society. And to, you know what? It, it's funny because it is very much because of The Rock's ego, but also there's no continuation of this universe. So it doesn't really matter with that, whatever post screen. You know what I mean? But I had also heard that James Gunn said like certain stuff is going to stick, kind of like mm-hmm. Peacemaker and stuff. Because mm-hmm. it's so like disconnected from everything else. So I think Shazam and Zachary Levi even said, like, yeah, you don't gotta worry about Shazam being gone. It's still gonna be here. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, too, uh, I don't I I could give two shits about Shazam as a as a hero. I I like I like Mary Marvel, which is just because I like her as a character, but uh Zachary Levi has said some problematic things in the past. But there's uh, anti vex. Yeah. I think he's like hardcore Republican or some. I'd have to look it up, but he's he said some not great things in the past. So I don't really care for him, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We we know Margo and Cena's sticking around probably, so we'll we'll see what what manages <laughs> to survive. Okay, so your homework for this week is to mm-hmm. go and listen to John Cena's rap album. Okay, <laughs> that's your homework. I couldn't think of anything else. He has a he raps. Yeah, he has a rap album. I didn't know that. So much. See, this is why, like I've told you, you need to get out of like that nerdy bubble. You need, mm-hmm. you need to expand your your entertainment palette. I'm looking at the rap album's called "You Can't See Me." I think he won an award for that too. He published it in 2005. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure it won an award. I don't know what award he won, but it won something. I this is crazy. He he's reached <laughs> charts and shit. Yes. <laughs> On the US rap album for Billboard, he was number three at the at, at, when it premiered. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, everyone, everyone forget my it's Jeff homework. You need to go listen to this album. <laughs> yeah. fact, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna listen to this album and I'll I'll give a review next podcast. <laughs> all right well thank you everyone for listening we appreciate you we actually kind of did this one under an hour usually they more or less Uh, go over an hour we need to pad the hour so uh lewis where can everyone find you on social media oh yeah everyone can find me on instagram and twitter at i'm luis guitarist um my my verified check mark will be removed shortly so (laughs) make sure to go see it while you can and you can find my work on ign.com where I do news and guides, and you can find my work at GameSpot.com, where I do news and guides as well. What about you, Noah? Oh my gosh! Well, you can find me at Noah is Garcia on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can find my photography works at Noah Garcia underscore photography. 
And sometimes I write things about comics, and you can see that at panelsandpages.wordpress.com. You know, when's the last time you wrote something? I'm just curious. Um, bye, everyone. <laughs> <See you> later. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>